Welcome back, everyone. We are here for session four of Occupation, uh, diving into the uh, Assassinations and Acquisitions arc. A little bit of a recap for the crew. Uh, they uh, they took a mission uh, from Val's employer, working with the Huts, uh, to disrupt a potential alliance. Uh, learning that uh, the exchange was working to facilitate uh, a contract being taken out uh, with uh, the Yuzon Vong. And the Huts aren't happy about that. Uh, the Huts don't want uh, the Yuzon Vong to grow any further. Uh, they want to really kind of stop, nip this in the bud. Uh, so the Huts have uh, Boss Granik has uh, hired the, the crew to make their way to Don Bran, uh within the Yuzon Vong sector, kind of bordering up on Hut space uh, in a little exchange outpost in the midst of the Yuzon Vong. And he wants them to go there and assassinate the Yuzon Vong commander. Um, what was his name? Vrek Pell. Uh, kind of making your way into this hostile world surrounded by enemies on all sides. Take him out. Uh, as well as, while you're there, see if you can convince the Erodium Mutts to not take the contract with the Vong. Uh, to instead, take a contract out with the Huts. Uh, and if you're able to do both of these, the Huts will make it worth your while. Uh, and with that, the crew was able to uh, get to utilize uh, a captured exchange ship to figure out some code keys that may be uh, valid to help uh, them reach the planet. Uh, with that, they also had a captured uh, Mandal or Mandalorian warrior uh, that they had taken during the initial conflict. Uh, with that, after a little bit of interrogation and uh, after uh, Lord Malachi gave them some brain damage with some lightning, uh, the crew brought him on board uh, and um, trying to get... Uh, he learned that before they gave him brain damage that there was a passkey that was needed uh, to kind of authentication phrase uh, to make your way on planet and land. Uh, and then after he got fried, uh, the group tried to uh, drug and juice him up enough to kind of make that brain fire enough to get the code. Uh, they got a code that they're pretty confident about um, before uh, kind of the, the alcohol wore off and the, uh, the stimulation, uh, kind of a general adrenaline uh, wore off as well. And he kind of went back into his uh, slow state. But I forgot to write it down. What did you guys name him again? Because his real name was Vex Cries. Uh, but you guys gave him a different name uh, after he had brain damage. I blanked on what it was in between sessions. Uh, it was Larian or not Larian? Uh, uh, I think we have to give him a new name now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Let me pull up YouTube. I think it was just like a random like Steve or something. No, it was like... Yeah. Mm. No, no, it wasn't. It was... we'll, we'll have to w watch the the recap of the other video sometime and pull out his real name. Uh, I but it. I do feel it's a character for the crew to give him a fake name and then properly <laughs> forget said fake name. <laughs> I like that a lot. What, uh, Carl? Yeah, sure, I guess. So, <laughs> what? But with uh, the code you guys got from him, uh, you all are back quickly approaching Don Baran, deep in Yuzon Vong space, a uh, hostile planet where you'll have the exchange, Yuzon Vong warriors, and potentially the Eroidium Mutts uh, against you. And you all know the Eroidium Mutts are a, a pretty elite mercenary company. I think it was C4. Uh, it spent some time touring with them, uh, but also earned their, uh, uh, their anonymity uh, with some of his... Let's say more selfish tactics uh, in battle. Uh, and with that, you guys know they're they're pretty for a mercenary company. They don't usually cut and run. They if they take a job, they'll take it through. They're professional. They're lethal, uh, but they cost a ton of credits. Uh, so you guys will have your chance to see if you can sweet talk the commander. Uh, but before you can even try to do that, you have gotta find a way to make it on planet and not get arrested or blown out of the sky. Uh, and that's where we'll pick up with the crew. Uh, you guys are um, on board your ship. That you've kind of, oh, and I should mention Val uh, painted out in a pretty gaudy display. Or not gaudy, even. 
uh, we'll say a pretty um, explosive display uh, of the exchange color. You did a good job. Uh, it's very bright, very visible. Uh, definitely kind of showing off the exchange colors. Uh, and C4 claimed that's how the exchange operates. Uh, but you guys weren't really sure if that was right or not. C4 believes it's right. <laughs> so, for him, it's right. Perfect. So that's where we'll pick up. You guys have some time in hyperspace before you emerge in case there's anything you all want to do ahead of time. Um, but let's say an hour in hyperspace ahead of uh, kind of uh, making uh, your approach to the planet. Uh, is there anything you all want to do? Um, Vrek or uh, we'll say Steve or Carl, as we're calling him now. Uh, he is conscious. Uh, he is but he's kind of he's back to um, he's back to the slow form. Uh, the booze is worn off. The uh, I forgot what C four gave him, but whatever that adrenal uh, adrenal thing was wore off. Uh, he's a little simple right now. All right, uh, I'm gonna try to fashion some sort of heavy cloak or something because I, I, I I'm not gonna wear my helmet. Uh, because I feel like that would be recognizable, but I don't want to be out there, uh, you know, just, hey, hope, hope you don't recognize this helmet, you know, so <laughs> I'll, uh, besides, it's not like VAR shows his face too much. I'll say VAR is no rule necessary. If you, you could probably just make it, you could find a <clears throat> back on that side to cover your armor, and I don't think you take, uh, in the, an invasion, he took off his helmet anytime there were cameras about, so... Uh, your armor's probably pretty pretty standout-ish, uh, especially with the helmet on, but without it, you'd be pretty uh, nondescript on that side. Um, right. With Vars doing that, I think I should mention two uh, Vex uh, did tell you guys that uh, of course, the use on Volcate droids, uh, the exchange is taken to uh, kind of appeasing them on that front. Uh, and they have uh, Voxen on planet. For our little Sith oh, friend. Yeah. Uh oh. Well, I got my disguise figured out. <laughs> See, took off my helmet. <laughs> <laughs> the that right there is one of the most Looney Tunes of the skies, but works perfectly. C4 is going to look very confident about what he may, has planned for the skies. May I roll a deception? Uh, uh, for, what are you thinking so far? Then we'll see how the deception roll goes. Oh, no, the deception is for the confidence. He has no plan. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, guys. Go ahead and roll deception. Well, at least you're not. You're not skinning Carl. It is, it is very clear. He has no plan. And he, while trying to look confident, he is quickly rummaging through the ship for anything. I was thinking of C4. I know he has a boxy frame that could kind of pass for a humanoid if covered up. But one of the things you'll have to worry about, you, you do have that vo kind of vocoder type voice, so that kind of mechanical rasp uh, to the droid. All right, so here's what's happened. I took a shot to the throat and can't speak. <laughs> Easy. You get to take a break from my wondrous voice, and I don't get out of the as machine. <laughs> that... What you mean? Yeah, I think that works for the, for the... Yeah, yeah, I think that'll work. Ah, man. I got another one of those cloaks by Steve by. Uh, yeah, definitely. We're, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see what I can scrounge up. I felt if I put on a cloak that had my face on it, that wouldn't be a good disguise, so I don't have anything for myself. <laughs> you have a cloak with your fit. Never mind. Yeah, let's see what I can, what I can find for you. I mean, do I find uh, another suitable cloak for our 
Yeah, you, you all do find a, a cloak. And I'll say for kind of both of you guys' cloaks on these sides. Uh, from a distance, you all will be pretty nondescript of that portion. Somebody comes closer, uh, kind of takes a hard look at you, especially if they try to move the cloak aside. Uh, there could be a little bit of a deception roll or performance roll needed on that side to see if they're able to penetrate through. Ah, right. you can always trust the Mandalorian to scavenge the best materials from captured enemy ships. <laughs> I mean, this is looks like a bunch of Saxo together, but uh, thanks. Um, Malachi, Val, or I'm not sure uh, how good you're going to be at fitting in on 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 planet. I mean, that tail's a little hard to to hide you have the, I, I don't know how to ask this does that work independent of you do you have control over it if you really need to not move it could you uh, Val has complete control over Val's body I am a perfectionist at uh, these arts oh well in that case all right oh that works then, I guess. Uh, Malachi, you don't have like a respirator in that mask of yours. You need to breathe or anything, right? No, I have no such limiting factors as this. I have a plan. Don't worry about me. And um, he's got his, his hood on and he'll take it off. Um, you can't see anything. It's very kind of like bulky with the, the rags and stuff here. Um, I wouldn't say, uh, Tegan, that he has anything that screams dominion on him outside of he's wearing drabby clothes and it's black and crimson-ish, maybe a little bit of blood on there. Um, but then he's, his mask covers like the entirety of his, of his head. So for the moment, that's, that's how he stands ready um, while we're, we're making our way there for the next hour. All right, it's just uh, your your mask is pretty distinct. That's why I took my own helmet off. Well, there are more things that are distinct than this mask. You will see soon, Mandalorian. You could always have Val uh, paint over it, temporarily, of course. <laughs> I, I I think uh, I think Malachi would. Well, I'd see a lot of singe fur if that's her place, but um. All right, well, if you've got a plan, I mean, the Domain didn't send no slouch, so. Ah, <sighs> crap. How much longer till we're planet side, her? Bars looks visibly nervous, by the way. He doesn't, he doesn't feel comfortable. He... Um, does, so Val's going to be recognized too, right? Um, That's a, face... You guys are all fairly famous. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, would there be any, by chance, like uh, any clothing of any kind, just even if it's just a hooded, I already have a cloak, but uh, something with a hood to it? Yeah, there's definitely uh, enough cloaks in that side for you guys to, to all have a cloak if you'd like. Yeah, so I'll just put it on and I'll just, I'll like flip up the hood and then Val will be like, ha no one can tell it's Val. <laughs> oh, whoa, where did Val go? <laughs> uh, looking good. I'm sorry, did we all just take the same disguise of uh, one cloak over us? I mean, <laughs> we didn't exactly steal a costume ship, so it's a little hard to... We're lucky we had this. Oh, Mandalorian, you are right to be nervous. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Yep, 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 planet full of Vong, planet full of... Uh full of Eclipse, planet full of uh, a bunch of people that want us dead, and I get to face them with my face. Be I like strong. fighting with We're not going to make the bomb face to face, right? We're simply dealing with all these mercs and whatnot. Well, right? we are murdering. We're murdering that, uh, that commander. Yes, but I mean like multiple Vong. Well, he probably has bodyguards. I mean, if he's a commander, I don't know. Oh, we're thinking this. Uh, okay. We just need to get planet side. Mandalorians. 
yeah. Perhaps if you made yourself look less Mandalorian and more thug, you would not stand out so much. I mean, I, I, I took the helmet off. I'm trying to cover my armor as best I can. I... But the galaxy at large knows your face. You are a hero. No, no, no. I, <laughs> hell, I, I never took that mask off for any damn photo ops. Trust uh, me, I've tried finding it for a Zerka promotion. It's not out there on the web. <laughs> what do you mean you tried find? All right, well, we must have not checked the Dominion records, but that is neither here nor there. I think that we will be okay. They don't know your face, and they don't know mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> What are our fake names going to be? I've been meaning to ask that. <laughs> I have a feeling that I was going to go with Lav. <laughs> Val, Val, what's your fake name, Go? Uh, uh, Lav. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? You know what's funny? I literally wrote a fake name just to have it ready in case I needed it. Yeah. And... and and I picked Val. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'll be right back. I'm changing my name. Yeah. It's funny. When you said we have to have a fake name, I was like, what's Val backwards? <laughs> um, uh, I, I guess I'll go with Reach. I don't know. An accurate name, because that's quite a reach of anyone that named a child that. <laughs> but then again, if you're working with these, if, look, if working with us lot, it makes sense that your parents expected you to be a disappointment since birth. Wow. You're one nasty droid. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Like property. Lord Malachi's else. fake name shall be Victus Corelli. That's very formal. As it should uh, be. We are here I to mean, meet not... two very important people <laughs> who I forgot the names of. Um, Commander... <laughs> uh, Rectal from the Yuzon Vong. Uh, you also know... So the three big guys you guys know um, should be around this planet. Uh, Commander Vrakpel of the Yuzon Vong. Uh, you all know that he has commanded. Uh, he was the one that led some of the attacks against the Republic before they uh, kind of entered into the armistice. Uh, you also know that the Erodian Mutts uh, are being led by uh, their captain, and I forgot his name, uh, their captain... Oh, Onamos Vin. Uh, and then the exchange boss of the planet, uh, who kind of runs everything uh, on uh, uh, kind of the, the uh, Don Baran, uh, is named Boss Drek. Well, okay. You know, you think we could rouse up uh, whatever this guy's name is and get him to tell us what they were supposed to do after uh, they destroyed the... Man, I'm blanking on that ship's name. Oh, uh, to find the station? To find the station. Yeah. Wasn't his name Vaxin the Mandalorian? Uh, Charles is not doing so well. <laughs> okay, Char then we just use the name Virak, you know, the Trandoshan's name. Ah, uh, okay, the prisoner. You still have his sword. Yes, oh, his name is uh, Carl. <laughs> All right, yeah, I've got, I've got his, uh, I've got his sword right here. I, I mean, his, I think he just had tally marks. I don't know if, whatever. But maybe we can figure out what the hell the, the they were going to do after they destroyed the Fonda station. Perhaps we tell them a partial truth that we are here from the huts and that we would like an audience with the leader 
the leaders that we know are here. We've got the Yuzong Bong and the uh, Arodium Mutts, and we have an urgent matter to speak to them about. They might just blow us out of the sky if they know we're from the huts. You may be, you may go to one with the force when you die, and you might want to hasten that. I do not want to be dismantled. Well, it's a risk. Die telling the truth or die telling a lie. Which would you rather do? Lie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like lie. We got the chance. That wasn't the hard choice for you, Droid. <laughs> yeah. All right. To me, it doesn't matter as long as we are consistent in our way forward. All right. Uh, you know what? Let me. This worked last time. Let me let me try this again. I'll. Bars will go over to the prisoner and and he's got his own bottle of tea. Har he's been saving for a special occasion. Special enough, I guess. Oh, is that the one that uh uh? Oh, the booze. Uh, I gave yeah. him last time. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I remember. I was like, oh, I have that too. Oh, look at that. So, uh, let me see if I can strengthen this this uh, fellow's constitution and get him to communicate a little better. So you see this guy right now, he's just kind of staring, or staring into the space. Like, you just see him just, like, just dead staring, like, uh, not even looking, like, out the, like, the cockpit window or looking at a, like, a computer thing. He's just looking at a wall right now, just staring off, uh, oblivious. But uh, he does take the, uh, the cocktail as you give it to him. Uh, it would do the same thing as last time. Uh, roll me a wisdom check for Vars, but it'll be for our good friend, uh, what do you guys call Charles? Carl. I forgot what you guys call him nowadays. It changes every time it's said so far <laughs> this session. Uh, let's see. Hey. Hey. I mean, I'll take that. It's not bad. So, I mean, he just kind of takes the, the drink from you wordlessly, and you see he kind of slowly drinks it down. Uh, and you kind of see him look at you a little bleary eyed, but like still more with it than he was before staring at the wall. Uh, kind of a little slur to his voice, and he goes, What else are we doing here? Oh, uh, well, that's the thing. We, we, we're, we kind of forgot. What were we supposed to do after Defond the Station? Uh, roll me a persuasion check on this side. This isn't so much to see if you'll tell you, see how much you can kind of remember uh, after getting fried and drunk. <laughs> Guys, see if are you doing anything with it? Uh, I, I, I don't got a whole lot that I can do. We could burn an inspiration. We could. We could. But should we? Perhaps yes, I can yeah. try. Um, can I cast Affect Mind on him? For, it's fortunate this is more of a persuasion for him to remember. Uh, he has had significant brain damage. Uh, so you got to see him slur, uh, go, Station? Uh, I'll burn the inspiration. I'll burn it, I'll burn it. I'll burn the inspiration? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was I was gonna I was gonna cast effect mine because that that'll give me um, advantage on charisma checks or so persuasion deception and whatnot. How? Why? The worst. <laughs> no. Yeah, he is just sorry. Slurring away, he goes. We were supposed to do the thing, and we were gonna... credits. Oh, we were gonna go to the casino. Casino. Are we going to the casino? Uh, yeah, yeah, we are. Oh, we man. are. We just gotta. We gotta find it first. Yeah. Who are you? Who are we gonna get the credits from? Uh, Boss Drac. Uh, they're gonna wire it over to us. And, uh, we were gonna go Ooh. and have a few drinks before we had to go back, and we we're gonna say it took some extra time. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And what you're gonna you're gonna call call boss, call the boss and let him know that it's a job well done. Oh yeah, we yeah 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 I, yeah. I've, I've totally got that. You know, uh, our boss, like you know, he really likes me. He he likes you know you know he really appreciates me on an individual level. 
Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. All right. Uh, Boss Dracales. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, give, give me give me one sec. Give me. I'll be right back, buddy. Okay. Hey, we're gonna go to the casino after. Yeah. Yeah. Casino. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So I think our way on planet is to message, get this guy to message Drek, tell him a mission accomplished. Drek sends over the money, and then they go to celebrate at a casino or wherever the hell. We get planet side. We make our way to find out wherever the hell the Eridonian mutts are staying. Find their find their leader. Convince them to join the huts. Commits him to have that meeting with the Vong. We murder the Vong, then we get the hell out of here. Yeah. No. Val has idea. Mm, you see, oh, when yeah. when people ask question to Val, some people think, hmm, I'm not so smart. But if Val appear drunk and Val say wrong thing, they think I'm just drunk. You're not drunk right now. That's oh, why he yes, pretends. Yes, is drunk. Well, yeah, okay, no, I, so there's a very fine line between not drunk and drunk. Yes, yes, yes. But wow. if our guest is drunk and they ask him a question, will they think he is just drunk or will they think that he is had his brain fried? Wow. I get what you're saying. That is Clever. a smart idea. Yeah, we need more alcohol. How far away are we? <laughs> <clears throat> well, we'll make sure he makes that hollow call with the Tihar bottle in hand. That makes sense. Good call, Val. <sighs> All right. Well, I guess now it's just a matter of wait. Do we have any more booze on board? Do I need to, you know, perk them up when the time comes? Let me double check the stores to see if they left anything in the. Uh... Uh, could I make I mean, an investigation check? Uh, definitely. So are you guys um, out of booze for? Uh... I've got yeah. one more. Actually, I've got. Uh, so you know, I I took drugs as uh, for my uh, hot thing. So I have one more Tihar, and I've got two Raba. I'm not sure what. Oh, Raba is also liquor. Okay. Yep. So I've got I've got plenty of liquor. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm prepared. Apparently, okay. We might need to, you know, get him to perk up and and talk. I'll uh, I'll do my best to guide him while remaining off, you know, screen camera. Not sure what the right nomenclature for this is. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Whew. C four is going to. Sorry, uh, C4 is going to lay in frame, like lay face down as if he is passed out drunk in frame, but not move at all or say anything with the disguise gotcha. on. Yeah, yeah, add to the. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. All right, well, I guess uh, we'll wait for us to approach the planet. Perfect. Well, you guys emerge from hyperspace. Uh, you come out uh, to Don uh and you see kind of this world. Uh, we used to be kind of a small, like a little, uh, kind of a mid, like a mid-size uh, kind of kind of world in the the outer rim. Uh, definitely kind of industrialized, but nothing too crazy. Uh, it had a pretty stable economy and infrastructure before all this went down. Uh, but you come out and you see in hyperspace that the world looks to be. Uh, a wreck of what it was. Uh, you see, kind of even just orbital view, uh, you see where many of the cities and once kind of uh, towns and nations of the planet once stood, uh, now is just crumbled in ruins. Uh, and you see kind of growing even on the outskirts of orbit, uh, you see numerous kind of grow yards. 
for lack of a better word to put it. Uh, you've probably seen these across other planets as well. Uh, most of them dotting the, the area with growing different Uzon Vong ships, weapons, resources, uh, the biotech that they need to keep their society afloat. And you kind of see it surrounding one area. Uh, you see the capital city of Don Bredan, um looks to be mostly intact. Uh, it's kind of the only area when you kind of pick up on scanners that seems to be still functional uh, after uh, the Yuzon Vong invasion. Uh, and you even pick up kind of uh, on the scanners signs of uh, energy, uh, life forms, uh, all the and power readings, all the things that would come along with uh, technology and people being located in the area. Uh, but you're kind of coming through this out of hyperspace. If you notice a planet, uh, you do see several ships surrounding uh, Don Berdan. Uh You see kind of in the minority uh, a couple of, looks like, uh, kind of a couple of Marauder class Corvette ships, uh, very no, the, frequently used by the Exchange. They're very good pirate type vessels. Uh, quick, can hit hard, uh, and easily able to get in and out. Uh, don't have the best armor, but they're not really. They're usually there for surprise attacks and dipping in and out. Uh, and you guys see them kind of hovering with a very static orbit uh, above the, the capital city. Uh, and outside of that, you do see a couple of Yuzon Vong. Uh, cruisers. No heavy ships, no dreadnought class ships, uh, but you do see some of their larger cruisers uh, kind of hovering uh, in, in space, uh, keeping almost watch over the planet. Uh, but as you all approach, uh, you do see kind of the chime of your holocam uh, buzzing. Uh, and you hear a terse voice kind of coming through and saying, Unidentified vessel, please report what you are doing in the sector of space and provide credentials, we will be forced to fire upon you. I, I think now's a good time to give our our captive his, uh, his medicine. <laughs> yeah, so I'd, I'd give him another uh, what's, uh, TR. I'll get my last TR. All right, Val, give me a wisdom save. Money, big money, big money. Did it roll? Well, uh, I didn't. Oh, am I rolling? Oh yeah, you yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. No worries, wisdom. Um, yeah. Hey, here we go. Nice, big money. Yeah, you see, kind of, uh, he'd with the last hour, kind of dead eyed again, but you see him chug more of that, uh, that liquor. His kind of. Uh, slur getting a little worse than it was that first time uh but you see his eyes kind of come to you a little hazy uh definitely kind of has that wobbly look of somebody that's had more than their fair share of liquor and he goes Rosa, well, all right, all right. What's, what's going on all right okay uh we're here we just gotta identify a ship you ready of course you are Hit the acknowledge thing and keep my body slightly out of frame. You see, as you hit the acknowledge thing, uh, a kind of a, a hologram pops up, and you see this uh, Devorian man. Uh, he's got kind of like very gaudy clothing. In C4, you can't really see it. Because you're faced away from it. Uh, but the rest of you guys do see he is decked out in gold and black. Kind of a real gaudy look. Uh, you see he's got several blasters strapped uh, to his hips, thighs. Uh, you see even one on his arm as well. Uh, and, he, and he looks. Uh, you see kind of a poor Vex, uh, the Mandalorian, uh, or say Charles or Chuck Carl. Uh, he, he is swaying. He is swaying. And like, uh, kind of, and, and, did you guys give him the bottle? Does he still have the bottle too? Still yeah. has the bottle. All right, you see him kind of holding that, and he goes, 
Hey, hello. Hey. It's you. Uh, we're, we're, we're back. <laughs> Woo, mission accomplished. Uh, do you see the, like, the Devorian, like, tilts his head, his horde cocked to the one side, and he goes, Are you Griffin drunk right now? Uh, there's gonna be a couple of staff checks. Who wants to roll the first one? We'll use your stats for these. Uh, see how well you will propped up. Uh, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it. I'll All do right. it. First one. I, here we go. E. Yeah. <laughs> you go there. I mean, we, we may have had a little bit, uh, but we we're, we're, we're just a little nip. Uh, and you see him kind of rattle off. Uh, the, the clearance codes. He goes, all right, we have seven four alpha. Uh, we're, 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 we're back. Uh, I don't, I, I, I don't remember how the mission went, but we're we're, we're back. <laughs> the mission went, but we're back. Assumably, they survived. That means it went well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Woo. You see the Devorian just looks. Like he, he looks quizzical. Uh, he does give off a short laugh, and he goes, "Tarvak, let you lots off your leash early. Where is the bastard? He doesn't usually put you grunts on the phone." Ooh, he he had the most to drink. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Vex kind of looking around. And goes, "Yeah, he must be passed out. I haven't seen him." Uh, can we get some more drinks up here? <laughs> uh, he is the Sith trying to like act excited for more drinks. <laughs> T4's body just twitches in the background. All right, somebody else, give me the next deception check. Uh, I'll, I'll go for it. Uh, I got decent deception. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you see, kind of the Devorian kind of scratches his eyes up and goes, Tarvox a criffin rough uh, nerf herder. Never seen him indulge himself too much, especially before he's checked in. Go poke him and put him on for us. Uh, and you see Vex kind of look a little, um, uh, all right, uh, uh, he kind of starts, like, you see him, Vars, like, you guys see him, like, like the, on the camera, he is just, like, poking off screen. Vars, you feel his hand just, like, poking into you, uh, and he goes, <laughs> yeah, where, where is Tarvok? I'll go check on him. Give me one moment. He, he's, wait. Hey. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll, I don't know how much of the hall recording can see, but I'll just walk like out of frame, like as it shows me leaving, like a part of me, maybe like left side or right side of my my arm, and uh, I'll just go out into uh, into the rear. I don't know, count to ten, <laughs> and come. All right, just stay asleep then, I guess, and I'll and I'll say it loud as I'm facing towards like the cockpit and come back and be like he ain't moving alright give me a deception check unfortunately with disadvantage <laughs> disadvantage <laughs> <laughs> you see the odds it goes that's not like the bastard alright report to docking bay 2-3 you lot don't recognize you all in the background, but uh, we'll send a squad out there to greet you all. Hope you, hope you, so hope you, Criffer sober up as well. Uh, any of you all fit to land this ship, or are we gonna have to tractor you in? Uh, I got it, I got it, I got it. All right, you smash into the base, boss Drek will have you hide. Don't need no reason nope. to piss off them use on Vong anymore. You know what I mean? Yep. Nope. Don't want no angry Vong. No worries. Let me just stumble to the front. 
can do that. With that, he kind of uh, cuts the transmission. Uh, you guys are sent coordinates to reach uh, the docking bay. Uh, you see uh, Vex kind of still stumbling around. He goes, it, it looks like you, Vars, a little bit. goes, I don't know you. Uh, yeah. What's up, buddy? How do you have Tarvox Blade? Oh, um, I'm... Uh, he dropped it. I'm just, uh... I'm I, ca I cast Effect it. Mind on him again. Wait, no, I did it earlier. Or did I? I can't remember. I do it now. I don't think you... <laughs> I do it now, and I go, Oh, you don't remember? He wanted playing in Pazak on the way back here. You must have fallen asleep during that. Quite the game. <laughs> uh, give me a give me a lore check real quick. Ooh, a lore check. That's my speciality. Solid. So you know uh, a little. I don't. You, I don't know where Trandosha is, but you may have. Uh, worked with uh, some Trandoshans before. Mm -hmm. They definitely are kind of the people that would follow with uh, the Dominion, kind of following behind Dominus's uh, kind of might uh, equals right approach. Uh, with their blades, especially a blade that has their score upon it, not something they would bet. Definitely something kind of has a, a little significance, and you kind of see him kind of quizzically look at you with that, even through his drunken stupor. It became a very extreme game of Bazak. He goes, ah, that's real weird. Uh, my, my head's not really feeling too good. I mean, show me where Tarvok is, and I'll just go uh, cra crash in the bunk, and we'll land. Wait, wait, wait. You said you wanted to go to the casino. Lucky for you, I have one of the casino games right here. And he gives a little wink <laughs> to the party. <laughs> How about some Russian roulette? Unfortunately, all I have is this pistol that takes mags, but it should be fine. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to try to convince him to play Russian roulette with a blaster. <laughs> See, boys, it's like. Do that <laughs> What'd you say? Hey, what the hell's a Russian? We'll, we'll call it a uh, Celestian Roulette. I don't know who would be the, uh, the best one. But you're going to need to roll two nat 20s for him to take the blaster and start shooting himself. <laughs> Does anyone stop to be forward? He's clearly like, yeah, we got to kill this guy now. <laughs> yeah, here, take take this. I... Uh... Vars isn't there. Mars isn't there. I just, I don't want to be there for this. <laughs> so, so Val will just be shaking his head and he'll walk up and he'll go, nah. And he'll like kind of push, push off C4. Uh, we gave certain assurances. We have to adhere to them, my friend. Uh, and then he'll go, uh, Vars won the blade through combat. He was challenged and he won. That is that. Like I said, Val will will just like kind of cut off and and walk out of the room. A very extreme game of Pazak. <laughs> <laughs> so Val's going combat for the the blade, and Malachi is sticking to the Pazak story. <laughs> Pazak that Pazak turned into a fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Val has to at least stick to the truth. So eh, bend it a little, but it's true. That's how great. the hell did you get that? How the hell did you get to 21? This is BS. On guard. <laughs> and then. <laughs> and then, all right, well, that's how I got to 20. That's all our right. story, and we're sticking to it. There you go. But, uh, all right. <laughs> Val, Malachi, roll me just a straight D20 apiece. All right. All right. You see, he kind of looks at Vela, looks at Malachi. It kind of doesn't sound right. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm just gonna go lie down for a bit. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll be back. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he starts to uh, kind of take off. Val's just gonna go where <laughs> Bars is. <laughs> C4 is. Uh, Bars is landing us. <laughs> C4 is gonna yeah. keep track of our prisoners. Note to self. Ask Talus if there's an easy way to create, uh, cure brain damage. I got a chance. <laughs> oh, no. <boy. laughs> easy? No. It's going to take me at least two natural 20s. <laughs> All right. Well. I guess uh, I'd rather Mars. use the two natural twins for him taking the blaster for himself or brain damage fixing. First, uh, <laughs> I mean, brain damage fixing because then it's like, oh, well, I just talked to the guy. Why is he dead? Oh, uh, because he shot himself. I, I don't know how to explain that without just looking suspicious as hell. <laughs> My charisma ain't that high. And make sure to get that on camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess well, I'm bringing it, I'm bringing this in. All right. So you you uh, take the cockpit, and start bringing the plate in. C four. You see, Vex kind of headed back towards the cabin areas, poke his head in, uh, and then he starts pacing. Uh, but he doesn't do anything. He just paces back and forth. Uh, Vars, you make your way into the atmosphere. Uh, none of the Uzon Vong craft move to intercept you. Uh, the exchange crew lets you in, uh, and you are able to kind of come through uh, and land within a docking bay in Don Bradan. Uh, you see the crew of exchange uh, kind of mercs uh, outside uh, waiting for you guys to lower the ramp. Uh, you see about five individuals in total uh, sporting. Uh, some have their blaster rifles out. Most just have pistols attached to their hip. Uh, and kind of just waiting for the ramp to go down. Uh, and Bex, the C4, as you watch him, just continues to pace back and forth, back and forth. Hey there, Bobby, what's wrong? Oh, no, 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 nothing's wrong. Something's wrong. People don't just walk back and forth because something's right. The, Come on, we've been friends for years. Tell me what's up. Uh, yeah, give me a give me a deception check. <laughs> Twelve. Yeah, that, that, that lines up. No, 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 no. I just want to stretch my legs a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, Val is going to go look for a spot to ambush these guys when they get on board. <laughs> right? Like, this is how this is going down, right? <laughs> so, 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 what are you guys doing? Uh, the exchange uh, kind of crew on the ground uh, basically is waiting for you all to set down and open uh, open the, the ramp. Uh, you're not sure if they're coming in or you're going out, uh, but uh, you do have Vex on board. Uh, as well as uh, you four, uh, all in your stylish hoodies, I guess, uh, with armor underneath some cases and I'm not in a stylish plating thing. underneath in other cases. Or mm -mm. fur. Um, C four is going to go on comms and go uh, uh, like wa walk slightly out earshot of um, of a person and go. All right, he knows what's up. Can we can can we kill him now? Urkel, Steve, Charles, Carl, whatever his name is. I'm going to walk uh, to Steve and I'm going to have a word with him. I, I never had him. He never got to roll his wisdom save against effect mine. Uh, definitely have a roll of wisdom save for him. He looks on edge as well. Is a uh, 15. 
DC. Nice. Let me roll that. All right. Can you post effect mine real quick? Yeah. Sure. Um. Okay. There we go. All right. Give me an inside check. Would this be at advantage at all? Due to him being very obviously already um, kind of on edge. Definitely tell he's on edge. This is at advantage, though. It's pretty uh... hmm. nice. Uh, fairly easy to see. You could tell. With kind of this brain cell he has left with uh, this liquored stupor you guys have put him into, uh, as well as Malachi's boast that uh, the captain lo uh, lost his blade in Pazak, he is he, he doesn't recognize any of you guys. He doesn't feel safe. Uh, he is not going to attack, but he is definitely kind of body language poised to, to run, flee, or... Shout. I see that you don't remember our trip and how the mission went. But you can find all of your friends in the back just fine. What I need you to understand is when this door opens, this boarding party needs to come on this ship. And if they don't, You'll be joining your friends who are asleep in the back of the ship. Make an intimidation check. Daniel. You're a mean one. Fortunately, not with advantage. He's hostile, so the effect mine didn't go off. Uh, 19 first, most yeah. yeah, so you see he kind of uh, blanches, uh, he kind of shrinks back. I go, uh, so I, you to tell him not to, to go on the ship, just to tell him to go on the ship. I'll say this one last time they come on the ship, or you don't make it off the ship ever. So do uh -huh. everything that you can to bring them onto the ship and to the rear. How do you want me to do that? You have a lot of drunk friends in the back of the ship. We need help offloading them. They're not going to do that. <laughs> you got to get something better than that. They don't give a fuck if their crew is drunk on a ship. Well, then you best think of something, or you're going to be a part of the wall over there. I, 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 I'll, I'll think of something. I'll think. I'll, I'll think. And he starts to go uh, make his way towards the ramp. Is uh, have we landed yet? And the door is open, or I mean, well, uh, you guys have you guys have landed. You haven't let the ramp down yet. Okay. Are you I'm standing the off now? to the I'm standing off to the side, like to the side of the door. Uh so when the door does open, I'm not I'm not seen. The only person that will be seen is this uh Mandalorian. So So as as he kind of approaches, I assume that this is on comm, so I assume Val is, is aware of kind of what's going on or um so he'll kind of be at the entrance where the ramp would drop and he'll just kind of put his finger to his mouth as a kind of uh you know just as a uh, signal and then he'll back into maybe one of the corners that's a little shadow shadowed and i will use uh one of my abilities one with shadows to go invisible Nice. So just so he's aware that I'm there. 
Perfect. Well, as Val blends into the shadows, uh, you see Vex kind of sweating and shaking. Uh, it's still slurring and sw- uh, kind of swaying uh, as the ramp lowers uh, and he walks off the ship. Uh, and he comes, he looks at these kind of five men arrayed around, some of the rifles in their hands, others with their pistols strapped. Uh, and he goes to the one of the center, goes, you guys go outside. Uh, it, it, it's bad in there. You gotta go. You, I mean, they, they're gonna kill me if you don't. You gotta go inside. <laughs> I mean, he did his job. <laughs> he did exactly what was asked. <laughs> yep. Uh. <laughs> How do you? Can you guys can all hear that. How do you all react as that goes on? Immediately on the comms, just like, Malachi, what did you tell him to do? <laughs> Not that. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you let him leave the ship? <laughs> <laughs> Malachi did try to allow a brain damaged man he threatened to kill. <laughs> all right, that's it. Poor uh, scroll. I pull him all the way back up the ramp into the ship against the wall. <laughs> I. <laughs> this is the most of this crew compared to the last one. The last one were I had a couple of bits of crazy, but they were still battle hard and they were soldiers and like trying to make a better universe. See, this is a Looney Tunes group right here. <laughs> Uh, All right, who's making so it off this world do, alive? Uh, as you see, no, really, you know what? I'm not pulling him back into the ship. Screw that. Can I force throw somebody into the air? If you guys are initiating combat, they're not surprised. I'm initiating no combat. <laughs> C4 stealthing. He does not want to be a part of this. I do yeah, want I to mention you are on a hostile planet. All right, I'm angry, but this is all on my mind. I stay hidden. And they, and they have those like force detecting dogs or whatever they are. <laughs> but they're not so if you right say, okay. But like, but if you flare it up, <laughs> if you say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna force it up, buddy. Well, this they're is gonna come home. running, licking their chops. Can can C4 cast the power? I'm I'm not for a fight. Coming. That's the last thing that I'll say. Oh, what the f- what the hell? I <laughs> it can see forecast the power. This if it's a cool. hostile power, uh, it will no. initiate combat. It, it, it is a it is non hostile power. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use fast access programs for this to do it as a bonus action, if that's all right. Okay. Of casting. Let's see. I'm casting smuggle on the party. Alright. And if I can, I will I would stealth. In the ship. <laughs> Alright. Uh does C4 uh you gotta give a little heads up to the crew what he's thinking? On um, comes just like <laughs> I know exactly what he would say, but it's not appropriate to, to this uh it's not the best thing to do, rather. And it's not what he's going to do. But it's what he thinks will give him the best chance of survival. And he's just going to yell in the comms, Scatter! <laughs> well, he hides. Val's already invisible in the shadows of the quarter, but is definitely uh, amped up with a C4 smuggle tech. Uh, Val, are you continuing to hide? I'm absolutely continuing to hide. <laughs> I'll be honest, so out of character here, there's really two options for Val. One is I just hide in the corner, or two, I push Malachi outside. <laughs> but I'm being a team player here. I'm going to hide. <laughs> so far, well, I will be a team player as well, and uh, I will hide. Vars, are you hiding as well? Okay, so from Var's perspective, he's landed the ship. Oh, all right, well, that was better than I thought it would go. Does he, what does Var's hear? How much does he know? You probably like 
because this isn't a big ship. Uh, it's like probably a little small than the Falcon, uh, so you probably can't hear everything clearly, uh, but you can hear what they're saying outside. Uh, you can hear Vex <coughs> stumbling down the ramp, yelling that they they told me that you need to come inside or they'll kill me, uh, and then C4 scatter. And C4, what does your smuggle tech look like? What is that? How does that uh, help obscure the group? I should have thought of this. Hmm. It definitely be just him sending a map because this is technically a Zerka ship, just painted like an exchange ship, which was right. which was stolen by the exchange at some point from Zerka. Uh, he just sent a map of all the best spots to hide right now, like it basically just sent ping a little mini map to them uh, with a little Zerka watermark over it, and he 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 just be trying to hide. Okay. How big is the area that um, Val and I are in right now? How big is the space? I'm, I'm thinking it's like the main area of the ship where people hang out or whatnot. I think Val's by the ramp. Are you by the ramp? Yeah, I was on like an in, uh, in opposite door side. Like not huge. Uh, so the ramp is like probably about 15 feet across. Uh, okay. So you guys can definitely be on opposite ends. Uh, of kind of the, the the area kind of hiding if you guys are uh, well Val can hide in the corner of it being uh, the dim light uh because that'll make him invisible uh due to his uh power there uh how's Malachi hiding uh, I mean I was just gonna um be as quiet as possible and get into another shadowy dark spot but I was just wondering how big that area is that we're we're inside where um where Val and I are in the ship right there so if you go up the ramp and you're in that first area that you enter, how big is that space right there? Yeah, not huge. Uh, probably about 20 feet all around. So four squares. Okay. Hmm. So Val's invisible, so he can hide there pretty easy. Malachi, uh, that would not be the best spot unless you can go invisible as well. No. Crap. <laughs> um there was specified earlier on a specific dark corner of the ship that had written right next to it, Malachi's spot. If you just cover the words Malachi's spot, you could hide there perfectly. Hopefully. I I guess I, I go there. <laughs> you guys know I, that there are vents and things amongst the ship that you guys have enough time to try to hide yourselves within. Uh, unless well, really, you can go invisible. That like was that. My, yeah. Hey, that, that was C4's plan. He ain't sharing the, the, the <laughs> master vent system. Very much. No. Vents, boxes, uh, the works on that side. Uh, for, we'll, um, we'll see. Oh, go ahead. I'm I'm debating hardcore right now, but we'll. I don't. I want to see. I want to. I want to um, hold an action. Um, for for this, if they start coming onto the ship, I would like to uh, cast the darkness. So, can't hold an action outside of combat. So, if they come onto the okay. ship and you guys start fighting, we can get out into initiative. All right. All right. I'll go. To, I'll go towards the cockpit, and I'll just be very quiet with my plus ten. <laughs> uh, Vars is gonna hide. You say is it gonna hide or? Nah, I'm gonna come out. Okay. Hey, the hell! I told you to get your shit together, or we're gonna kill you. What the hell's the matter with this guy? How are you guys doing? All right, uh, so the uh, bar is like gonna leave the cockpit to start heading down the ramp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He overheard the. If, if I don't get, the, if I don't get him outside, uh, they're gonna kill me. Oh, oh. So he's like, <laughs> <clears throat> this is a, this is gonna be an interesting moment here. Uh, Malachi kind of finding himself and being like, "Okay, I done fucked up with that kid. Is he's dead in the mind? Um, I should just put him out of his misery. These are all internal thoughts." And then I'm walking to the cockpit and Vars is walking out. And I'm just kind of like, where's the Mandalorian going? And then I hear what he does and I go, that's fucking brilliant. <laughs> and then and then Malachi will remove his helmet. 
and he will walk out into uh, the light, just silent, and stand behind our Mandalorian. Ah, uh, you can't see that. I think that's pretty suspicious. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's how his face looks right now, right? That's... Yep. <laughs> Are you trying to help or hurt Vars right now? Hey. You might yeah. be able to pass it off as maybe yeah. long scarring. Hey. Maybe. Yeah, he's, he, he and that's, uh, funny enough, that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. We're going to need a little bit of help in there, mates. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so... You know how Vars has that, like, hidden blade, like, tucked away in one of his ambraces? Yeah. He's going to put his hand on, uh, on Rex. On, I keep right. We've given him so many names. <laughs> What's his name, Tegan? His real name is Vex, yeah. His... All right, he's, he's going to put his hand on, like, Vex's back with the the, t the tip of the, of the thing, of the blade, poking him in the back just a little bit to let him know where it is and try to think stupid he's going to get it. That kind of a... <sighs> You just had a little bit too much to drink, bud. Go inside, sit down, calm down. Get to work on unloading. All right, Vars, give me a deception check. All right. Can we do Move that whole thing where where I call on my past and have another proficiency? Because I'm yeah. desperate. <laughs> yeah, you've got uh, some proficiency points. Gosh. Um, yeah, I think, I've, I think I used it to give myself athletics at some point. So yeah, I think I've got him. I still got him left. So yeah, <sighs> Vars is is taking in this situation and realizing he's going to have to do a lot more talking than he thought. And he's calling upon all the uh, half truths and lies that he's told in his past, and figuring he might need to to channel that part of himself a little bit more in the coming future. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna use that 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 point. Get the perception, the deception training, and uh... oh, because you got two points, right? I think it's two for. It's for per. It's per. Um, what is it? Proficiency. Uh, right. Is it one point? So... Let me look it up real quick. Uh, two points for a skill proficiency. Yeah. Is it a skill? Yeah, like, for sorry, for skill? deception. Proficiency, right? Okay. All right. Well, then no. Then I, I wouldn't be able to do it because I got athletics for the for the other one. Okay. You still in that? So twenty or even without? I mean, I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah. I mean, even without it, who would have thought, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Little did we know, this is not the first time he has ran out of the ship saying they're going to kill me. <laughs> this man did work with a Chandosian. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You see kind of the, the, the guards at first looked confused. Some of them started like hefting their rifles up. Uh, but after uh, kind of hearing Vars' explanation, just smelling the the booze and soiled clothing and probably a little bit of rotted flesh off of uh, poor Vex after the day he's had, uh, you see them just push him off. He goes, ah, stupid Creffer. Uh, go, go sleep it off. Uh, all right. Where's Tavik? Uh, have him sign off and we can go clear you guys. You can go make your way to the cantina. I... He didn't make it. They, they said he was just sleeping it off. <sighs> Look, uh, we, we lost a lot of folks on that mission. I didn't want... Uh, I didn't know how to break it to the, the guy back there. He's, he's, he's not all there. Especially with all the drinking he, we've been, she's been doing, trying to forget what happened. He might need to see a head doctor or something. He's he's not right. You see him kind of nod and go, uh, "Poor nerf right there, all right. I like Tavik. Good in the fight. Usually gets the job done. Did you lot blow up that station? Yeah, we made him pay for it." Good. All right. Well, go get yourself a drink. Uh, I'll make sure Boss Drek uh, knows what you all did. 
anybody pop by and uh, say hello and gotta thank you for your services, if you know what I mean. All right. Be nice to see the boss. You gents take care. Uh, you see, uh, he looks at uh, Malachi, he kind of leans in, he goes, Phew, you, you really bought, uh, bought in and drunk uh, the space aid, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> Vaughn, uh, go full native on us, aren't you? Absolutely. It hurts so good. <laughs> uh, he kind of, like, he looks puzzled, like, uh, he would kind of like... He, Hang around, buddy. We don't. I mean, I mean, you do you, I guess. The Vong way is a pathway to many things. Some consider it to be unnatural. Oh my god! Look, he's good in a fight, but he's not a great conversationalist. Not at all. <laughs> but he's a, and he's also got very good hearing, apparently. Uh, well. <laughs> Don't, don't cause no trouble. Uh, we'll clean up the shit uh, and uh, lock everything down. But yeah, you guys go go have a drink and uh, don't cause no trouble, right? Yeah, we'll see if we can get our friend a uh, room at a casino. That way he can sleep it off in comfort. We don't got no casino here. What the hell? Casino, what the hell was he talking about then? Sorry, it's my first time. This um, my first time here. You kept going on and on about a casino. I guess that's just his uh, more of that more of that head damage I talked to you about. Yeah, yeah. If you all want me, is he gonna be all right? Is he just uh, has he served his purpose? I mean. Let's get. Can I, so where you find uh, somewhere for him to lie down in comfort for a bit, and we can kind of go forward from there. I got a bit of medical training. I can assess him a little bit. All right. Well, I mean, if you want to keep him around, I mean, he looks a little, little worse for the wear. I mean, sometimes, you know, the Vong, uh, they'll pay a pretty penny for people they can uh, put in their sacrifices, if you know what I mean. I... I... Well, that Vars is gonna swallow because he's trying his best to keep up a front, but it's like, what the f what the hell are these people? Like? Um, I, we will take that into consideration. If you could please point us to the nearest cantina, we could definitely yeah. use a drink. And for the first time, uh, real contact, Malachi actually puts one of his like pale hands onto the back of Vars and starts pushing him <laughs> like let's move yeah 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 uh we'll, we'll we'll get the rest of our folks and we'll get out of your hair um you said you guys are going to clean up the ship or do you did you want us to handle that no we got it we need to refill and refill it up uh so we'll clean it up for you guys all right we'll we'll gather our people and get out of here All right, I see a point down the way. It goes uh, center of town. Uh, we got the the dusty Rancor Cantina. You know, get a few drinks in you. Uh, maybe Boss Drac will pop in. Uh, you guys can uh, kick your feet up for a bit. Yeah, sounds like a good way to spend the day. All right. Uh, all Tegan, just in the immediate vicinity, is there anybody? that looks like they're associated with the erodium months like just no uh, you just the exchange the... okay crew around cool so, so vars and malachi are heading to the bar uh, assumably with vex or c4 and val are hiding in the ship no 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 no, no, no. We're, we're, we're coming back on the ship dude to to get okay. you guys and then we're gonna to gather all right. you all yeah yeah that... yeah, yeah don't want to just surprise there's a droid <laughs> all right all right so long as i understand i yeah. have got grown concerned yeah all right well all right guys there's there's no cure like a hangover for like more booze let's get to it yeah uh, they kind of uh, pass uh the five uh exchange soldiers gonna pass let you guys through uh 
Vex is kind of just standing there, bewildered. Uh, I imagine Vars is, is Vars the sand still kind of on his back, like a vice. Uh, you kind of see him just look like he goes, but, 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 but. Uh, and you see him just kind of slowly get pushed along with you guys as you make your way into the city. The only butt you need to worry about is your own. Pipe down. Keep walking. You kind of see him just like hang his head. Uh, and he just kind of keeps walking along. Uh, his eyes kind of growing uh, blearier as you go. Uh, you kind of get in that same almost dead look uh, as you guys kind of get further into the city. Uh, yeah, you guys make your way into uh, the capital city, uh, and it looks, it's kind of a weird mix. Uh, it looks a bit war-torn. Uh, you can definitely see that it's seen conflict recently. There are blaster scorch marks on the walls, uh, deep rivets where it looks like thud bugs and razor bugs may have collided. Uh, you see, as you kind of cleave the, the docking area, uh, there's one thing that probably draws your notice and kind of like right near the hangar kind of close towards uh the path to the center of the town uh you see like rows uh and with the rows almost like they've hung up scarecrows of droids uh, like you see these droids battered and broken lining the way um all cut crushed broken uh kind of marking the path towards the center of the city uh, you see uh, there's just this kind of uh, boorish display of kind of the, the Yuzon Vong's conquest within what is supposedly this exchange city. Uh, well, this okay. is quite a delightful place. I should come here more often. Can I roll deception for C4 keeping his cool seeing this? He doesn't care about the droids. It's more like, oh, that can happen to me! <laughs> yeah, if you'd like to, yeah, so if uh, C4 uh, loses his there. I'm gonna do that. I'll let you decide, how's that go for him? C4 is picking up pace, picking up pace, picking up pace. A little bit of a jog. Starting to get into a little bit of a hearth here around as he looks over. Keeps around, <laughs> keeps going. <laughs> Why don't you get away from here? C4, easy. Your servos aren't as quiet as you think. Wow. Um, I prefer if we leave this place immediately. These inferior yeah. marbles, um, well, they're making great decoration, and I'm just uh, a little disturbed by the craftsmanship of these massacres. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know how your droid emotion works, but focus on my back. Keep your photo receptors or whatever locked on my back. It's here, but you don't need to be aware of it. Just walk. Easy. I'm going to try and make sure you stay alive versus most everyone else. That's... Thank you. Uh, yeah, no worries. Well, then right back at you. Where the hell is this cantina? Eventually, you guys do kind of walking through this row of droids to this cantina. Uh, and like most of like the buildings you guys have passed on your way towards this cantina, um, they look either burnt out or abandoned. It doesn't really look like most of the city is being utilized since the exchange has taken it through. Like the, It's kind of almost weird how it looks like the docking bays you guys landed in look to be kind of well-kept, well-maintained. Probably the scars of battle removed from it. But the city, this outer edge, looked to be mostly abandoned. But the closer you get to the cantina, the more you start to see kind of still the battle damage, but it still looks like people are trying to maintain and keep it up. In the cantina itself, uh, you see flashing yellow and black lights. Uh, you see kind of the rusty rancor, uh, but you see like a big exchange hologram logo superimposed um, over the this rancor uh, with kind of yellow and black coloring. You see exchange uh, people wearing the exchange flag and colors uh, maneuvering in and out of this uh, cantina, uh, kind of uh, some uh, drunk, some uh, definitely uh, indulging in the spice, uh, but they all seem to be kind of having a good time uh, as you reach uh, the entrance. Uh, 
you do see kind of one large looking kind of uh, a toll in there, uh, tentacles kind of flaying around. Uh, and it goes, you lot coming in? As we, he kind of looks at the weapons, he goes, drink what you can. We don't want no shootouts though. Got Vong in there, so keep it uh, keep it PG. We don't want to put uh, piss the scar heads off anymore. You guys see him look, say scar head and look at Malachi. And he goes, "Yeah, all right. Yeah. We yeah, we don't we don't want to piss off the use on Vong no more. Uh, so just keep it casual. It don't start nothing." Uh, uh, yeah, no, no, well, no problems from us. With that, you see him kind of all open the door, gesture you all in. Uh, within, you see kind of just this kind of like a scene of uh, a crazy scene within. You see, it definitely looks like a kind of a raging party. Uh, you see, uh, exchange soldiers everywhere drinking, rolling dice, playing sabak. Uh, definitely seems kind of like this gathering point on the planet uh you also do see a couple of use on vong scattered around uh and actually not so much scattered around you see two of them uh in the back of the room uh almost standing guard by uh, what looks to be one of the large doors in the back uh you see they're in their vondam crab armor they this corally armor encasing them uh both of them have around their right arms uh the antistaff snake wrapped around uh they can harden and become their staff uh they seem clear-eyed and focused uh you see them standing in the back uh you also even see a couple of people with uh the blue uh and um the blue and yellow um, of the Eroidian mutts, uh, kind of drinking at a table in the, the back corner of the bar, um, kind of keeping it a, a keep, kind of a, with their head, kind of every occasionally, kind of taking the, everything in. You know, they stare around the space. Uh, you see, in the middle though, uh, there is a uh, Twi'lek bartender just rapidly pouring out drinks. What do you guys do? Hmm. Is there, a, is there a table that might be within earshot of the, um, the I guess, striders from the Eridonian mutts that are that are present? Definitely there. There is a table not too far from them. You may have to strain a little bit to hear them over the, the music, uh, but definitely one that you kind of inconspicu- inconspicuously kind of uh, try to eavesdrop in uh, if your hearing's keen enough. Oh. Uh, Vars will gesture at said uh, table. Be, I, I think that my one might, that one might be best. C4 can't talk. Oh, you you reveal himself. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Uh, Val, I hate to make assumptions because of your, you know, self, but. Do you, by chance, have really good hearing? Um, I actually don't know if that's a species feed. I don't actually think it is. Let me look. Hmm. Sorry, this is out of character. In character, Val definitely has very good hearing. Of course, (laughs) that's the best. I can hear a pin drop drop by a fly. Um, yeah, so that is definitely not a feature um, uh, mechanically in game. So uh, Val would respond, uh, Val can hear anything. All right. Well, you might be our best bet then. I've been around a lot of explosions. Uh, ears aren't what they used to be. Uh, well, how about you, C4? Uh, give me a thumbs up if your hearing's. Uh, well, if you have any advantage over us uh, fleshy fellas. Me- out of character mechanically? No. In character, C4 would give two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course they did. Mars is an idiot for trusting these freaking... <laughs> 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 All right. 
Okay. You, you yeah, Ty Vars probably has like a silent just prayer for his old crew to come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Talos, he had to go to the Republic. Uh, Caesar had to go get himself killed. Dash is blowing, you know, at least Dash is still blowing stuff up somewhere. And the dang gardener. <laughs> All right. Okay. You guys uh, take the seats closest Same. to them. I'll, I'll try to read their lips or something. Vars, what what are we trying to achieve here? Val can achieve it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm trying to get more data on the Eridonian mutts. It looks like the the fellows in those colors over there are part of that gang. Might overhear something, something relevant. Hmm. I don't know, maybe where they're where they're staying, where they're hiding, how they feel about this whole Vong thing. Ah, uh, yes. Val shall call chaos, and then you shall get the answers. And then he'll start to walk what? away. <laughs> C4 as as Val's walking away, C4 is just giving up two big thumbs up to him. Uh, Where the fun begins. Oh gosh, uh, he'll he'll look at the tool I can be like, you have any uh, you have any Tihar? Goes uh, roll me a D twenty, see if he's got kind of a, a rare stock on that side. Uh, Eleven plus, he does. Uh, yeah, you, you see him kind of looking goes, we've got some TR. Gonna cost you a bit, hit. but get you a bit. The hell hit me. All right. Uh, what is TR um, standard or premium? Uh, I think it's just standard. Uh, I yeah, I I had the upgraded version of it because that's just what I got. So <clears throat> I think I think there's a standard version of it. Standard version too, perfect. Yeah. Uh, actually, no, it looks like TR is just uh, premium and above. Oh, okay. Sweet. So uh, Vars, roll me. How uh, would this be? Roll me two d eight. So yeah, you see, uh, he kind of uh, he pours you um, kind of a stout glass of uh, Tihar. Uh, and he goes, "We'll be really celebrating." Uh, and he looks uh, kind of at the the bill. And goes, uh, "That'll be a uh, five hundred credits." Yeah, uh, sure. I've got this one. I'll pay. I'll pay out the five hundred. Oh no, this is for me. I know, but I'll, I'll pay off the sure. for you. Uh, uh, thanks. And with that, Vars will throw it back. This is, uh, Vars is just having a day. Solid. Well, give me a, uh, Oh, actually, you don't need to roll or anything right now, but you do get a, was it, a dish row D4 when ability check using, or there's really no ability check on Constitution, but saving throws using Constitution. Uh, and at the start of your turns, for the next, how long? You're getting 2D4 temporary hit points. I mean, I'm not, I'm just doing it for flavor's sake. I, don't, I, I really <laughs> hope this doesn't end in combat, but we'll see. <laughs> You get that Drake, kind of feel that warm Tihar flowing through you. Uh, and everybody give me a perception check as you guys try to eavesdrop on uh, the Eroidium mutts who are sitting in the corner. Uh, I'm looking forward to what Val does for chaos. Oh, yeah, Val, actually, what are you doing for chaos at this point? Um, that's a good question. Am I Is trying there... to read lips? Val knows exactly what they said. <laughs> uh, C four. Uh, give me one second. There's something I'm thinking about. Just need to figure out where it is. I'm looking at the spot. There it is. 
Could C4 attempt to order some spice non-verbally? Instead of uh, li uh, trying to listen in. Try to order... Uh... How are you going to do that? How is C4 going to do that? He writes it down. Boss points at his throat and makes the sign of like someone shot it. And we'll just tap onto, uh, onto there. Okay, uh, what spice is he trying to find? Uh, Mullen Gold, if that's how you pronounce it. All right. Uh, Say if they roll me a d20, uh, 11 plus, they've got some Mullen Gold there. <laughs> no. Uh, you see, he kind of uh, shakes his head and goes, Rough luck, buddy. Uh, sold a little ass bit of ours on that already. Get you a drink, though. I smacks his fist into the desk and just shakes his head, like, internally. God, this day get any worse. So, As the, oh, go ahead. Oh, so so Val, he thinks he knows exactly what Fars <laughs> asked him to do. All he really heard is can you. And then it's kind of loud in there, so he didn't really know what he asked. But he's got this. Is there anyone gambling in the canteen? There are. There are people playing Sabak, uh, roll of dice. So he's going to kind of walk by one of the tables. He's going to attempt to pickpocket one of the players and plant it on another player. Preferably some uh, some credits. All right. And I do uh, have uh, I have a thing that helps. Okay. Um. Maybe I can do it as a bonus action, I guess. So I, I theoretically, much maybe could do it twice. So, but I am quick fingered. Perfect. Give me a sleight of hand check. Uh, so it sounds like you're gonna be trying. Snag one of uh, somebody's chips and kind of throw them in somebody else's pocket. Uh, uh, it's got to make it look they're stealing off them. Yep. All right. Solid. Yeah. Val, you do that so smoothly. You go through, lift one of those chips, kind of just definitely put it in the person's pocket. Uh, they had no clue you were there, no clue that you did anything. How do you kind of how do you call attention to this? Or how does they how do they find out? Just say. Um. So at this point, I actually I just like wouldn't. I would just like walk back up to the table, and I just tell Vars. Uh, yes, I have chaos is coming, and then <laughs> I'll just kind of I'll let it play out to see if they notice on their own or when they notice on their own. All right. While we wait for that to play out, uh, you all kind of try to non discreetly or kind of discreetly um, eavesdrop on the Eurydia Mutt's table. Uh, C4, uh, you're, you're just a little distracted. Uh, or C4, you were buying uh, the stuff. Uh, Val, you had your own thing going. Uh, Vars, you can kind of make out some of the words. You can kind of see that they, you see like some like, emphatic gestures we'll say uh but it's loud it's it's hard to hear but you do see uh and there's three people there uh all kind of wearing armor wearing the erodium mutts colors uh you see them kind of just like gesturing emphatically uh but you, you can't really pick out what they're saying uh malachi kind of in a similar boat uh the only thing that you catch that vars didn't uh is you see one of them uh kind of nods his head back towards where the vong are uh and he kind of gestures really hard at uh the person in front of him malachi will lean towards uh vars and they seem to have their eye on the door back there that the vong is guarding when we came in, did we see anything that connected to this cantina's establishment on the back side there? Uh, you didn't see anything that connected to it, but you definitely know there's more space with the cantina. Perhaps we can walk outside and around. We'll cause quite a bit of attention, or get quite a bit of attention if we try to go through the front right here. 
according to our white fur friend, uh, chaos is coming. I have no idea what he means by that, and I'm kind of scared to ask. Hmm. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to this. Val just snickers, and I'll, I'll lean over to the bartender, and I'll say, yes, the gentleman over there, the one I took the credits from, uh, he will cover my drink. You shall go ask him now. <laughs> <laughs> you see, gives you a puzzled look, uh, it kind of kind of shrugs, uh, you see his leg will go up and down, uh, and you see him uh, kind of shout out, uh, his voice augmented a little bit, it goes... <coughs> Hey, you cover this Crefish drinks? Uh, and you see the guy goes, no, I'm not. I'm up on a hot streak right now. Why don't I pay for that uh, furry nose bastard's drinks? Uh, but you see him look at his chips. Uh, and he goes, I see him count the stacks of chips and come up line. He goes, what the Criff? I'm missing chips. Oh, who out here robbed me? Uh, and you see him kind of like start, like he reaches for his blaster. He goes, who took my chips? Uh, he kind of starts looking around the table. You see, everybody looks confused. Uh, you see the uh, kind of the, uh, the tweet like, yells, hey, take it down a notch. Uh, as this, like, but you see, this, this guy looks angry. Uh, he's got his hand on his blaster, he hasn't drawn it yet, uh, but he is eyeing each of the people at the table. I see that chaos has begun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Seaboy's trying so hard not to laugh right now and blow his cover. Mars is gonna lean into it with a sigh. He's gonna he's gonna just yell to the ground, right? They're not trying to call attention, but just, hey, did he have that many chips before? <laughs> give, me, give me a performance check on that order. Performance oh, or yeah. step, your choice. Oh gosh. Uh, yeah, they're all garbage, but whatever. Performance. Let's see. <laughs> oh, 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 this you, you see the guy that's holding the blaster? He looks and kind of looks eyes at you for a second. Like he, he kind of sp spots you're the one that said it, but you do see him kind of look at back to the table at the rest of the chips, uh, and it kind of goes and sees and starts counting and. He looks at the one that Val planted the credits on. Uh, he goes, you're right. He does have more chips than he did before. Uh, you see him draw his blaster. Uh, you see uh, kind of the rough, uh, the toilet out that was uh, kind of uh, bouncing outside, kind of rushing in. You see some of the exchange around the room. Uh, some begins shouting, fight, fight, fight. Uh, as uh, all of this goes on, uh, the Vong look curious. You see the epistaphs are still furled, uh, but you do see one kind of peering forward. Uh, one even has a kind of a like a little bit of a smile on, if you could call it that, with his uh, tatted up and deformed face uh, as he sees the conflict brewing. What do you guys do? Fight, so fight, fight, fight. <laughs> uh, is there a way... Have shots been fired yet? No shots have been fired. Uh, the, you see the the, uh, the the human that got stolen from. He has drawn his blaster. He's got it leveled right at the, the guy that supposedly stole him. That guy just looks super confused right now. He's got uh, that guy. Uh, the other guy beat him on the draw. He's got his hand on his blaster, but he hasn't tried to pull it out yet because he got beaten on the draw. Uh, Are there it does any other like person who's holding a blaster right now? What's that? Are there any other people holding blasters up to this guy right now? Uh, you see that the bouncer guy has kind of unslung uh, his own blaster, uh, but nobody else so far has drawn theirs. So c is going to take the cloak, can cover his mouth with it, lean to the side, and can he play the sound of a blaster firing just to have, have this standoff just pop off? <laughs> this will be a performance check, DC 15, and can be a little risky. Uh, C4 wants to see the chaos. All right. A mistake has been made. <laughs> can 
I use one of our inspirations. <laughs> no. Okay, I'm trying to think of the alternative. I thought it would work. He has he has a he has a decent modifier. Is there anything I can do to help? Let me look. I doubt it. All right, you guys sticking with it, uh, defying it, or uh... commit? Uh, can, can I please use an inspiration? <laughs> yeah, your name. What did you pick? I, I'm I'm just writing the idea of a door being discovered in a cantina. I mean, we we haven't even gotten to the bosses yet, who we're supposed to talk to and convince yeah. to do things yeah. so that we get a lot of goodies and, and things for it, the future. But if we want to use an inspiration for... Uh, well, Defiant is a 50-50 shot here. If we have mm -hmm. a... I don't know if we've used it already. I, I have not it. used mine. Alright. I'll throw mine into the mix. Whatever. Thank let's you. See. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, well, How many inspo do we even have? Uh, you guys have two right now. Yeah. Just thank you. <laughs> so, C four. How does a blaster go off? And Varus, how do you stop it from sounding like a droid is just imitating a blaster sound? Um, I just inter. Varus sees that he's like I don't know, maybe some sort of sixth sense, picks up what he's about to do, and just interposes himself between C four and the majority of the people. So it's a little harder to determine where the sound came from. Nice. So you guys did a perfect recording of his own blaster. You hear the, the blaster sound go off from C4. Uh, you see the guy that was cut it to stolen for ducks. Uh, and he starts squeezing the trigger. Uh, and you see a little bit of a firefight break out uh, with the bouncer trying to uh, firing blue stun rays towards uh, the guy who shot. And the guy who shot uh, firing just straight up lethal blast at this uh, kind of uh, this poor uh, Bothan. Uh, who's trying to like duke and judge out of the way? Uh, you see, it has taken up a good chunk of the room's attention. You see, even one of the Yuzon Vong uh, kind of edges towards the fight. Uh, kind of the one that was smiling before, gleefully watching uh, the two kind of uh, shoot at each other, start to uh, tear the bar apart. <clears throat> what are you guys doing? What are the Moridian Mutts doing? 100%. Yeah. Like, where, what are they up to? They are actually, like, you see, like, they had stopped their argument. They are watching. You see, they are all. They, it, actually, everybody give me an insight check with this. Just used all the good rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I, we did. <laughs> oh, Malachi boy. and Vars, you guys get a good read on the Roidium Mutts. Uh, two different reads on them, though. Vars, you see, these are trained fighters. These are people that have been in and out in battlefields. Uh, but you kind of look around between them and the exchange. They're far less comfortable here. Uh, the exchange fighters right now, uh, even those uh, you got kind of, to the ones not involved in the brawl are cheering on, some still drinking as blaster bolts are flying through. Uh, you see the mutts. Most, uh, some of them, are, two of them are drawing their blasters. The one in the center hasn't, uh, but he definitely looks concerned. He looks out of place. Uh, you can tell they are tense uh, and they're kind of ready to spring to action. Uh, with an at 22, you get to kind of see that they are kind of their eyes continually kind of roam towards that door. Uh, especially the one of the center kind of seems very fixated upon that, especially with blaster bolts flying. Uh, you almost kind of see his body language leaning towards it as if he's deciding to kind of make his way over there. Uh, and Malachi, through the force a little bit, as you kind of read through them, uh, they are definitely tense and prepared to, for action. Uh, there's a, kind of a, a bit of worry or um, almost professional concern kind of in their aura a little bit. 
C4's gonna tilt his head with the party towards the match. Just like, are we gonna like, hey, let's go with, with them? Like, the kind of like, let's go to the door. We're we gonna join them. Not saying a, a word, of course, but like tilting his head, like, damn. Yeah, we, we should definitely follow. Follow the leader. Yeah, I mean, that's this is an extension of who we want to talk to, right? Yep. He's gonna, he's gonna, C4 is gonna push about which them. Okay. So, uh, so, so what are you guys doing? So, just to be clear, they're they're seated and looking at the exit. No, uh, looking no. at you know the door that the Yuzon Vong is standing next to in the back of the the cantina. So, with a nat twenty, would we know? Because I don't want to like kind of game it. But are they waiting on their boss? Is their is their boss present with them, or like are they the guards? Yeah, you're definitely gonna get some professional. Uh, as Malachi got some kind of concern, some worry. They're definitely tense and um, on guard. Uh, you definitely do see they're ready for action. They're, you uh, and actually with the nat twenty two, you see that they aren't even drinking at their table. Uh, they all have water uh, within their glasses, uh, and they haven't, at least one of them, uh, mostly all three of them, have had their eyes on the door and back. I will yes. lean towards Vars. Well, this is chaos manifests. It looks like our boys over here are a little weary and keeping eyes on that door. What do you think? Well, uh... It looks like uh, they're not here to drink. I'm wondering if whatever meeting's supposed to go on between the Vong and the Mutz is happening right now. High chance. Vong Garden. Mercenaries keeping eyes on the door. Seems that both parties are going to be... I don't know. Seems they're both going to be present when we come in. Yeah. Alpha the, Alpha the Vong down and... Gunpoint the mercs. Well, maybe we can make friends with the mercs before we do anything else. Uh, I suppose anything's possible. And he'll just kind of like <laughs> sit back real quick and look at the chaos that's still continuing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. The hell is it? Oh, my God. Why am I the face of the party? I have no charisma. <laughs> I have all the charisma. <laughs> Make me the face. Vote for me Go today. Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> right here. <laughs> Beautiful. For your initial description, I didn't think Malachi initially was going to be a little more Dooku-esque uh, than he ended up being. <laughs> uh, okay. So, Bars is going to... So... Approach the butts. Okay, go ahead. So, so before okay, you do that... what I'm doing. I go, ah, if Val was a bodyguard and Val's boss was in danger, I'd be going through those doors. Those men are bodyguards and their boss is in that room. <laughs> yeah. Well, these are the men that we came to, uh, I guess, make nice with. <sighs> Might as well try saying hi. They don't seem too happy with the Vong. Vars is going to approach the table. I'll come with you. You see kind of uh, the, the three men arrayed around. Uh, you see one of them's a Rodian uh, kind of sitting in the center. Uh, and he lifts his eyes up as you guys approach. Uh, kind of still same tense, like ready to spring into action body language. Uh, and he looks, uh, he lost? Oh, I think I'm where I need to be. Most of you last watching, uh, you kind of hear like a see a blaster bolt fly and smash into one of the lights. It goes, and still the chanting of fight, fight, fight uh, throughout the uh, the cantina. Most of you lot seem a little entertained with the the show. Well, yeah. Most of our lot is actually right here, and you're precisely who we're looking for. Um, 
Would your captain happen to be here? We have some urgent business. And with this fiasco going on out here, even more urgent. It regards the bong. Kind of see him, his eyes kind of narrow a little bit. Uh, he looks around and goes, Who are you, Lot? Uh, friends, we hope. That's a good question, but considering the hostility that's going on in this room and the fact that we've approached you in a humble manner, we ask that you take our requests serious. We know that he's nearby. Like I said, we urgently need to talk to him. Give me a persuasion check. Hmm. Restraint from a Sith? I go. Nice. Is he not proficient in persuasion? Oh, I am. Wait. No. I, I put Ooh. I put all my stuff towards intimidation and deception. Okay. Uh, I guess it could go, it could have gone either direction because I'm not really telling the truth, but I am. I mean, you can. So, so if you yeah, wanted to go to deception, that's a that's a plus three to that. Not that oh that no, that, that's good. That was uh, more persuasion than deception because that was pretty much the truth. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, you see, kind of uh, looks and goes. Captain's in the back right now. He's meeting with uh, the executor. You got business for us? I could put you in touch with him, but not here. Unfortunately, we know that he's in the middle of this meeting with them. And it's precisely this meeting where the details of what we would like to offer and the information that we can provide. Your captain needs to know before he makes a decision and can't reverse it. We're not signing a contract today. We gotta wait for the commander to arrive before we can go through with that. He won't be here, you gotta see him check his watch uh, for another few hours. The executor's trying to wine and dine him right now. This executor, just to make sure that we have the same information, what name does he go by? Lock Kim. Uh, and actually, everybody give me a uh, a lore check too. With uh, actually, no, no lore check necessary. Um, Executor, you guys would be somewhat familiar with that title. Um, it's usually what the Yuzon Vong refer to as their spies, kind of their spy masters. Okay. Uh, with that, I'll look at the rest of the group. I, I assume that we're all kind of just standing there. Um, I just kind of cross my arms and cock my head and, and look towards bars. Uh, well, here's the thing. We, we uh, desperately want to talk to the head of the Herodonian Mutts before any sort of deal with the Vong is finalized. We're here. If you can, uh, we're here to present a counter offer of a different interested party. One that might be more lucrative in well, short and long term. Because if you look around this planet, see what the Vong have done to the rest of it, what do you think they're going to do the rest of the galaxy as time goes on? You see, kind of nods, goes. I can put you in touch with the captain. As I said, uh, we're not signing to the commander gets here. The captain right now is in the back, but they got a couple use on Vong with them. Uh, we can set up another rendezvous for you in an hour's time, or we could try to get you back there if you want to talk it out with an audience. Well. <sighs> Just to be clear, the, the 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 person back there as a spy master is not who we were sent to. Uh, no, to you guys are uh, sent right to kill spell. Commander Vecprel 
Uh, yeah. Just thinking out loud, but killing a spy master would be pretty significant. But that would likely ruin our uh, our go at the months. C four is looking at ours like, well, that's wings. Yeah, yeah. Well, Rendezvous uh, or audience? It's well, yours well, we we think the Vong might not be happy to hear a counter offer, so we'll rendezvous later on. You see, he kind of passes through a data pad and says, "All right, meet us at a ship uh, here at these coordinates. Show him the data pad. They'll let you through." <laughs> so, before uh, the Val leaves, I'll just come and I'll tap on the table, and I'll say, "Make sure to tell your commander the quality of your potential ally," and he'll just point to the exchange, all shooting each other. Can I see him smile? You did that? And he'll just shrug. Uh, as you shrug, you see kind of uh, one of uh, the, the guy that initially started the shooting uh, gets splashed uh, with uh, one of the stun bolts from the bouncer and just goes careening into the bar, uh, bottles flying everywhere. Uh, and he goes, uh, you can see the, uh, the erodium mutt kind of nod and go, all right. I'll pass that along. Even the guy see him look through goes. Just keep a low profile if you guys uh, don't want the Vong spotting you, though. Noted. And thank you for your help in this. Before you go, though, I got to ask. Who's got the credits behind us? Who's putting this off right Well, uh, combination of interested parties, but primarily the huts. You see, him nod and go. I got deep pockets. I don't know if they're deep yeah. as the bongs and the exchanges, but I'll pass it along. There's a. a thing is, the Vong get their way. Credits are just going to be paperweights. Not from what we've been here. Uh, from what we heard with the exchange, they get first pick over any planet. Once the Vong run through, they can go through and ransack the banks, take any of the valuables, loot anything that's worth having. Yeah. Do you want to know why that is? Just to make this a little bit quicker. It's because they have no use for that. Those are resources that they don't need. I mean, they don't need their own. Biological mm -hmm. needs are all that they endeavor for. And if you need to see a reason why you should not ally yourself with the Vong, look no closer than right here at my visage. See him nod and go. It looks like they messed you up pretty bad. They but, did. Yeah, a lot of credits, a lot of valuables, and you just said they don't need it. They don't even want it. Hunts well, pay good, but you know they're some greedy bastards. If you don't mind me saying so. Yeah. Yeah, you your offer, but you got to know they're they're giving the moon and back. I know, but. Once they uh, they finish rampaging through the galaxy, taking down every bit of powerful opposition there is, at that point it'll just be squashing bugs. And you can you'll be you'll be very rich bugs, but then you'll make that gesture with his hand and just and that's that. Could be the last to be squashed though. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to spend your credits on? <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> They're saying the galaxy's not doing too hot right now. Public waving the white flag. Dominion getting its teeth kicked in. And the Mandalorian's on the run. So, got to throw in with the winners, you know what I mean? Yeah, Especially well. when they give it a payday like this. Yeah, but the winners are always going to see you as second-class citizens. 
we can talk about this later. I don't want to get a, I don't want to catch a stray blaster bolt. I'll see you all in an hour. See you in an hour. Uh, Hello. <laughs> you guys are able to make your way outside of the cantina. Uh, you see, as you guys are leaving, uh, more of uh, kind of more of like on duty. It looks like a kind of more serious looking exchange forces come in, uh, and then like with stun batons and blaster rifles and you just hear them starting to shoot up the place uh, as they're trying to uh, restore order to the cantina after Val's uh, stunt. Uh, but you all are uh, in the hour. Is there anything you all want to do within the hour before you head your way there? Uh, well, a small round of applause for uh, for, for Val's uh, uh, shenanigans. So there's that. Oh yes, very uh, well done. Yeah. Uh, um, is there any? Are there any shops here that would be uh, interesting? Something to kill time with in that meantime, or is it just the standard wares that we'd find here? Yeah, pretty nothing like exotic. Uh, you do see they've got like their own quartermaster that's kind of. Uh, shelling out uh, blaster rifles, sniper rifles, the works. Uh, you see uh, a lot of tattoo artists, uh, some even like low key advertising kind of painless tattoos, um, offering out kind of like free uh, like uh, painkillers as you go through the process. Uh, you, and kind of similar to some of those ones you guys came across uh, on the station where it doesn't look just like uh, the Vong had it done. Uh, yeah. you, know, you see, you have a lot of that. Definitely, uh, some things you can kind of spend some time on as you're waiting to to make your way towards the uh, the Eroidian Mutt's ship. Oh, okay. do you not want to get a commemorative tattoo of a time here? Yeah. I, I think I want to forget it as quickly as we leave. Really? Yeah, a little bit. I can't blame you. I want to get out of here as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hate the fong. I swear one looked at me. Yeah, we'll be all right. I hate him too. Is there anything we can do with uh with our you know the the prisoner we're toting around? Yeah, he's just been kind of mumbling as you guys have gone through. Uh definitely a little stupid. You know, uh, I, I thought we were getting a drink. I'd like a drink again now. Uh, and he just kind of muttering that way. Um what would you guys want to do with them? Now, hear me out. They did offer that we take this guy. I know, I just said I hate the bug, but credits are credits. And he might be put to some religious use. Better than him just taking up space and water and the air you have to breathe. The last thing I'd want to do is provide Devon with a resource. I mean, as butch as adult as this mind, this man's mind is, and even though he's a disgusting turncoat, I still wouldn't want to put him through whatever the Vong have in store for him. Why not? I mean, look at him. He deserves it. He's not doing well, anyone any good. He didn't do anyone any good before. But I'm indifferent to the man, man, but he does not deserve this. Yeah. From the Sith? Mm. I think the, the Sith has something in them about self-determination. I don't know if you've seen what the Vong do with their prisoners or experiments, but they just they suck the, 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 the sentience out of them. They turn them into, into robots with flesh. Ah, uh, no, no different from memory wipes. I've seen it a thousand times over. They certainly would you want try. Your, would you want your memory wiped? <laughs> you couldn't if you tried. All right. Let's say I could. Would you want it? Would you want to erase every little bit of who you ever were? No, but I want to. I would want to erase him. He points to the prisoner and he knows things about us. And he's not me. He's garbage. I'm top of the line. Well, either way, I don't want to give the vine another body to use if I, if I can avoid it. 
They're probably they going to go. sacrifice him and what? They put him to work in like a rock fields? That's one less rock field a person. I don't know what their job title is, but it's one less person manning their fields. It's one less set of hands doing the Vong's work. And we're going me. to be taking the match from them. Consider it um courtesy. Look, I'll, I'll just shell out some money, throw in an in, and he can figure out his life from there. I'm pretty sure he'll end up in the wrong hands anyway. You, you can't even hold himself up straight. Can't speak. Can't think. Not much different. C4 is really pushing his luck with this one. Well, he is quite useless now. Admittedly, no thanks to me. However, I did leave him alive, and I left him alive. <laughs> Yeah, um... I think that Vars will have a the, the final decision on this, as it is one of his ex-brothers-in-arms. But we should respect that decision, as we are supposed to be this coalition of sorts. We should respect each other's decisions, course of actions... Rights leader. Looks at Vars. <laughs> the hell are you? Well, thank you. First, why are you looking at me like that? <sighs> All right, look. We're, we're sorry, I didn't know you, you could tell I was. But if you if you do actually look at his his face, covered in scars, as you can see, and he's got yeah. deep sockets of darkness. There's no eyeballs there. It's just sockets. Well, he just looked and like. You know, like, like you yeah, look and then you look away. <laughs> I am. Hey, look, it, it adds to my charm. I don't know what you're talking about. It's it's not grotesque. It's, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's it's, it's uh, character. Positively um, oozing charm out of my eyeballs. <sighs> like, like a little a little black tear comes out. You know, like from Casino Royale. You know how like he bleeds blood, like blood comes out of his eyes. Like he just takes. <coughs> and just kind of like wipes <laughs> away black tear. All right. Well, <coughs> one hour. Okay. We're going shopping. This is turning into a shopping episode. The rest of it. I think. I think Lars had <laughs> had to yeah, say. No, no. I think we're done. But uh, look, we'll keep him prisoner as long as it remains viable. If it, if we leave him, we have to leave. If we have to leave him, we leave him. But I'd want to get him back to. The, my people so we can at least face justice for turning back or maybe you can get treatment or something but I'm not leaving anybody to the wrong if I can avoid it yes uh, a glorious patriarch and he does a little curtsy bow for a little sarcastic effect Bar is just doing the whole like I should have got it a tea hard to go <laughs> <laughs> all right well, let's uh, let's make our way to this ship. <clears throat> See you again. Oh. Yeah, where did we say we were going to meet him? Did we? Their ship. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Deegan, what's that in that one for? Just roll. Just roll. Deegan's <laughs> <Just roll. laughs> <Just roll. laughs> like, move along, move along. <laughs> mm -hmm. hey, bro, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Hasn't shown yeah. a roll the entire session until now <laughs> you guys are able to spend the hour doing whatever you need if you wanted to pick up some med packs they do sell med packs uh, if you want to get yourself tatted up you can definitely do so uh, but the hour does pass by uh, everybody give me a perception check just as this hour goes through Hey, there's a roll. Thanks. Now, you guys, you notice that somebody's been kind of 
following behind you. Uh, as you guys kind of spent the hour kind of dithering around, do whatever you guys were doing, uh, a hooded man in a cloak, uh, broad shoulders, has been kind of tailing you. Doing a pretty good job of it for a while. None of the rest suspect him, but you, you do see kind of uh, he's been sticking close but out of sight for you guys. Um, so while everyone else is uh, talking about the fate of uh, 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 Vex, um, I kind of noticed this, and instead of telling the group, I'll just kind of, as we maybe turn around a corner, I'm going to try to kind of disappear and let the man pass. So uh, like, not literally go invisible, but just kind of try to hide and uh, yeah. let him pass. All right, so I zoom. Yeah, you uh, kind of try to round the corner and try to kind of get a good spot to let him pass through. Uh, but you do see as you kind of look and wait and wait, you, you don't see him kind of coming behind. They actually lost track of them. Yeah, so I'll, I'll wait a few minutes and then I'll catch back up to the group and say, ah, yes, yes, we have a tale. Uh, but Val was not able to apprehend this man. Uh, did you did you get a good look? You see, this is like the first time that Val probably looks like slightly embarrassed. And they'll say, um, no, Val, almost like shocked. Like, Val um, was not able to get a good look. No, no, no worries. You, at least one of us noticed. Well done. Um, is, uh, I guess he's not following us now, right? That, uh, no, 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 Val. If he was following, Val would have apprehended this man. Ah, okay. Well, um, I, I guess you, you spooked him. Hopefully. Put him back. <laughs> yeah, so I... Do you all think you may have spooked away the tail? Uh, what do you all do next? Um, with that information in mind, is there like a, a store that we could enter through one entrance, or like a, a place, like a location that we could enter through one entrance and exit through another? Kind of like a, a method to try to lose the, the tail that might be just following from a further distance? That's far as thinking, at least. Yeah, well. Definitely, there are some of the, the, the largest stores. You can kind of try to see if you can kind of sneak out the back. Uh, is that kind of what the crew's thinking? Any we, definitely, we definitely don't want to go to a uh, meeting with. It's supposed to be only for us and other people knowing that we're there. So, sounds good to me. All right, let's, well, let's give it a shot. So hopefully this helps create further distance. So let's do that. Hey, a thing. You know, my money's on this is an agent from the Mox making sure we aren't planning an ambush. Well, I really hope you're right. On the chance that you're not, I'd rather try to avoid him. All right. <laughs> As you all make your way into the store and try to lose yourselves amongst the crowd and uh, exit through, everybody give me a stealth check. DC 14. Do we still have... Um, how long did uh, Smuggle last? Yeah, Only an hour. an hour. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. This one's going to be at this event because of the armor. Hmm. Oof, all right. 
you all try to like lose yourselves in the crowd, uh, kind of make your way through the store. Uh, and you guys see, as you kind of try to like head out the other exit, you see this hooded figure standing in front of you, uh, kind of at the, uh, the, the exit, uh, kind of blocking the path. Uh, and you see two other hooded figures kind of on the other side of him, flanking on either, kind of uh, to his left and right. Uh, and you hear him call out in a guttural voice. But that's where we'll wrap up our session. Uh, we'll pick up next session uh, with you guys being confronted by uh, this hooded figure and kind of figure out how uh, what's going to go down for you all. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, everybody join us, and will that be two weeks for uh, session five of Occupation, uh, the 17th of October. We can see how uh, the crew fares in this situation on that side. They're able to uh, talk, fight, whatever may happen their way out of this one. Uh, let's see uh, how that goes. So make sure to join us in two weeks for the next session of Occupation. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see you next time.